I greet every each and every one of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being with us this evening. We know that you are hearing the sound of heaven. You're staying on the frequency of heaven. Thank you for taking the time. I believe that even as we begin to open our hearts and as we open our minds for change, for transformation, God will speak to each and every one of us. This evening, I want us to look in the book of Revelation chapter 4, one or two verses as we prepare our heart and prepare our mind. Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, for the first three chapters, Jesus was talking about, Jesus was talking to the church, and in Revelation chapter 4, it is the dispensation of the time of the kingdom. For seven churches in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you can see but in the book of Revelation chapter 4, we see that John is a type of the church and a type of the kingdom. And God begins to speak with him. And he says in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, he says, After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place. Let's read that again. After these things, I looked, not just see, but looking. There's a difference between seeing and looking. He looked, that means he's looking for it. And behold, a door standing open in heaven. You will only see what you're looking for. And the first voice which I heard, was a trumpet speaking with me, the clarity of the voice of God. I believe in this day, in these seasons, God's voice is going to become like a trumpet. It's going to become so sure in your spirit. It's going to be so sure. You're going to be had, you're going to have that knowing, not just believing, but you have the knowing deep inside of your spirit that this is what God is saying. Come up here and I will show you things that must take place. Many times we don't realize that we ask God to come down to where we are. If we, if we do that, then our perspective will remain the same. Our way of handling the issues will be the same because we don't have a fresh perspective. We don't have a fresh reality. The realities that have been created in our mind is through the facts, through what you see, what you hear, what you touch, all that realities have been forming your perception and forming your frequency, forming my frequency. And this is why God says, you cannot stay where you are. You need to come to where I am. You cannot, you and I cannot stay where we are. If we want to hear God afresh, if we want to begin to take, go to the next level. Always, there must be a coming up here. We need to go up to the next level. Now, how does this happen? How is it applicable to us in the upper room? Many, many times, we thank God, the word that comes to us always ministers to us. I've heard many people say, wow, this is the word I actually needed. Uh, this is the word that spoke to me. That's good, that's great. But I want to challenge you and me today not to stop there because this word is not just to minister to you, but this word is to make sure the message and the messenger become one. That you and the word become one. We many times we stop the word comes to us, but we don't go up. We don't go. We don't listen to that, to that word that is causing us, driving us, putting a direction in us to go higher, to come up here. Because if you stand where God is standing, what you see is different. If you, I say again, if you stand where God is standing, what you see will differ, is different. And how do you do that? You do that from the understanding that the perspective of the word that is given to us is not just to minister to us, not just to help us, not just to meet our need. Yes, it will. It will speak to you. It will speak to your situation. It will speak to everything. That's the first level, but that's only the first level. There are other levels that God wants to take us to. The once the first level, God begins to, to take us out of our situation. Then he begins to set us to where he's standing. Come up here and I will show you things that must take place after this. So the place you stand is a place where you will see the future. And when you see that future, you will adjust your present according to that future. You're not living by the past and adjusting your present according to your past. 
but the Bible is clear. Come up here, I will show you the things that must take place after this. I pray every time we hear, every time we hear Papa, every time we hear the upper room, it's not just a word to minister to us, but it is a word to become like the word, to become unstoppable, impregnable, uh, powerful, strong, sharp. So I pray today, even as you hear this word, I pray that God will give us a seeing eye, a hearing ear, and a heart that is yearning for him. May God bless his word. May we open our hearts and our minds this today and let the word get into a good ground that we will come and stand where God is standing. I pass the time over to Papa right now. We're talking about the power and purpose of Pentecost. We are entering into our day of Pentecost. Can you say amen to that? In that day of Pentecost, we realize that when Peter explained about the day of Pentecost, he spoke that Jesus, the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracle signs and wonders, God performed through him in your midst. It was God working through a man. Amen. Everything that Jesus accomplished, he accomplished as a man. So it gives us, you and I, a possibility of doing great things as a human vessel. Amen. Jesus did not accomplish things as a superhuman. He accomplished things as a man. Amen. Give me a man. Choose among you a man who will come and fight me. That's what Goliath said. God is still answering the cry of the enemy. He's sending men. Men are God's strategic weapons of war. Are you with me? God are God's, God are, men are God's strategic weapons of war. He uses men to bring down powers of hell. Are you listening? He raises up great men. He took one man to change all of Asia. He took one man, Joseph, to deal with all of Egypt. He took one man, Moses, to deal with all of Egypt. He took one man to deal with all the seven nations stronger than, than the nation of Israel in Canaan. Are you with me? It took one man. It took one Titus for the island of Crete. It took one Timothy for, for, the, for the church at Corinth and Ephesus. It took one, one person. Are we hearing? It took one Paul and Silas to bust up the jails in, in, in the nation, in the, in the city of Philippi. It took one. Amen. It took one Jesus to change time. Are you hearing me? It took one Jesus to just fulfill the 4,000 years all right, of, of, of promise that was given. It was one Jesus that came and destroyed completely the work of the enemy. But this Jesus was a man. Are we hearing? So now it gives you a great possibility. If he was just a human vessel, if he was, came in the form of flesh and blood, you and I can do it also. Yes. Amen. The possibility of what we can do for God is just in, in, you know, phenomenal at this moment of time. If you can understand, if you, if you will not allow these men to become limited by, by, by your culture, by your tradition, and by your own fears, and by your own thought pattern. Most people are frightened by their own thoughts, not devil. Oh, I, I'm afraid. No, oh, I, I don't know. Oh, that, that's a cockroach. Oh, that's, that's a lizard. Uh, oh, oh, you know. They're frightened by their own thoughts. Don't, devil doesn't even have to come along the way. Are you hearing me? They're just frightened by their own thoughts. They're frightened by what is already imputed or Im, imparted into their thinking patterns. If you have read all the negative things and you fear, you fear. You know, I, I, when I came here, the Presbyterian Church had a theory. The theory was this. If, I, if you lay hands on people, if people fall backwards, that's the devil. That's the Presbyterian theory. If, if I lay my hands and people fall backwards, it's the devil. If they fall forward, then it's God. Because that's worship. So if you lay hands, they must fall forward. So if they fall backwards, it's devil. If they fall forward, it's God. If that kind of theory, every time I lay my hands, people are falling backwards, they think it's devil and they ran for their lives. Can you imagine? They didn't search the scriptures. It's just thought patterns inside your mind. Strange. Whatever you put inside your head, it will just destroy you. And we are bigger than our minds. We are bigger than our minds. We've got to think. If the devil says you're no good, you're no good. If that thought is there, you've got to fight that thought because he's not your friend, he's not your ally, he's your enemy. If you have a thought pattern that only, only men are supreme, ladies are, you know, are, <coughs> are second class citizen. You know, I tell you, this, this, is, this is, my fellow men are all here, the countrymen, Indians are here. I hate this. I hate this when the women are pushed right to the back. 
I know some places where the woman cannot eat except the husband eat first and then she'll be waiting in the kitchen. I went to stay with some of these people and I said, where's your wife? She's outside. I said, ask her to come and sit with me. She said, no, no. The man said, it's okay. It's okay, brother. It's okay, brother. I said, it's not okay, brother. I want her to come and sit here. And then lo and behold, because the first day I watched that after the husband has eaten, she took the plate of the husband, you know, and ate from the same plate without washing it. She was eating from the plate. I'm thinking like, I'm going to sort this boy out. I said, how dare you treat your wife like this? You, are you born again? I said, are you a Christian? Well, well, I'm Christian, but living in India. I said, are you living in India? Is your roots in India or in Christ? Are you a citizen of heaven? Are you just a citizen? I said, change this thing because, before, because this is a disgrace to the kingdom of God. Because Jesus set the woman free. Are you hearing me? Set the woman free. It's amazing. You go to Africa, it's the same way. The men are all talking in the coffee shop. The women are the one working in the field. And they are the ones carrying the heavy load in the head. The men are just walking with plastic bags. Are you hearing? In some parts of Africa. And there are some parts of Africa, men would not allow women to work. They are the warriors. They are the workers. They are the laborers. Then you have extremes in Africa. Some places, men are the macho. They do all the real stuff. Women are the ones just look after the children and stay at home. Other parts of Africa, women are the ones working in the field. Men are the ones supervising. India is the same too. Yeah, you, you see, this kind of stuff has to stop. We are born again. We are born again. We're not bound by the he, he, in culture of the, whether it's Western culture or Asian culture. We got to redefine everything. Amen. Amen. You, you, you must not be as a wife just supporting your husband at the side and from behind. But you got to learn to come up from behind and stand alongside with him. The day your husband can give you the same place and say, you and I are together. We are one. Amen. Rather than I am one, you are none. Oh, I'm telling you, women fight for this. All the married women fight for this. Don't let your husband bully you. Don't let your husband pin you down. Don't let your husband try to hold you down and say, well, you are the woman who was deceived. Man was the one. No, man was the one who knew what to do and did not do it. Woman was the one who was deceived. Man was disobedient. Woman was deceived. So the punishment should be go on the man. More punishment should go on the man. The man had a broader shoulder to take the responsibility of this. And all the women said, yeah. Amen. Fight back. Let, your, let, the, let the saucers fly yeah. with me. You know, I, 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 I hate this. You know, my, my father was a real gentleman. He, he never allowed anything. You know, in, in, in all, all my days in, in, as, as a young man growing up, my father never touched my mother. You know, he would lift his hand and he'd put it down straight away. He'd get his hand out and hit his hand. <laughs> he would hit himself. He was a very, very hot-tempered man. Very hot-tempered man. But yet he would never, 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 never. He loved my mother dearly. Yeah, he loved my mother dearly. Such a precious man he was. Even though most of his life he was a non-Christian. Most of his life, he was a non-Christian. But yet God saved him at the, at the nick of time, six, seven, seven months before he passed away, gave me the privilege of leading him to Christ. Even though he persecuted me, burned my Bible, burned, you know, burned all the things that, that pertain to the kingdom of God, everything that, was, that I brought in, books, tapes, whatever, they destroyed him. By the last moment <coughs> of his life, God just supernaturally touched him. Amen. It's just, it's just powerful. You know, that's why I'm saying this to you, that we are, we are a man. Yes. We are chosen by God. That's why all the unnecessary things that clutter our lives must be removed. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's, why, that's why men must treat women with dignity. They are not sex objects. They are not just objects to produce children. They are not just objects, washing machine. They are not the objects of, uh, they, are, they are not the dry cleaner. They are, you know, they, they, they are not all that. All right. I remember this man came to this girl, lady, and said, you know, I, wa I want my wife to be able to wash my clothes. I want my wife to be able to look after my house. I want my wife to be able to look after my children. I want my wife to be able to cook. 
And the, the woman looked at him and said, Sir, what you need is a maid, not a wife. To so go find your maid. I, I, I like women who are strong, who can talk to men straight in the face and tell them, Hey, boy, shape up. All right. that's, why, that's, that's why I'm very glad that all the pastors and their wives are there. So anytime I need to catch the, catch the husband, I talk to the wife. I just talk to the wife and wife, wife will leak out all the, all the stuff. I got both the phone numbers, the mobile phone of the husband, as, of the, my sons, as well as my, my daughters. So I'll talk to them. Sometimes I call the wife, sometimes I call the husband and begin to check on both of them at the same time. Little did they know that God has joined them together so that they can be strong. Yeah. Amen. And, and cultures like this must be broken. Yeah. Amen. We've got to fight this. We've got to break it. Even my father, was, who, was, who was Hindu most of his life, he did not like a lot of the things that was happening as far as women were concerned. Women are always brought down. Or women are always not supposed to be seen. You know, they're not even supposed to be seen, not supposed to be heard. They're always hiding. Yeah, they're always hiding. And this is not right because we want the Bible to say the young men and young women, sons and daughters. There must be dignity brought back to women. Treat them with, you see, Jesus treated all the women with respect and honor, including the one caught in adultery. Including the one who had six husbands. Are you with me? Including the one who was just completely messed up. He treated her with honor, with respect. This was not a this was not a this was not a film star hollywood star popular person or not a princess this is a woman who has just messed up her life emotionally mentally physically for which lived with six men she is like the scum of the earth and see how jesus treated her and that should give us enough sense to treat ladies well because the world sees women as sex object they want to sell a car they put a, a lady not fully clothed you know, a lady in bikini. What are what are we? What are people buying? Car or the lady? They just they just wanting to attract the attention, the sensuality of men. That's why women are always seen as a as 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 a bad object. It's always that women are bad. The woman, are, you know, when a woman is strong, she's a Jezebel. You know who created Jezebel? A weak man. A weak man is one who created Jezebel. Because a man, you know, he gets, gets there to, you know, he wants to go and get the land and he couldn't get, he come back home, he crying, boo-hoo, you know, you know and, and then the woman said, hey, don't stop crying, boy. Let me just get the job done for you. You sit here, you eat your, you eat your pudding. Let me just get out there. And, 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 and he gets out there and he, she gathers the, the man of the city against, you know, uh, against this, this person and, and just begin to deal with him and get him killed. And then she said, look, here's a certificate of the land. Go and possess the land. Oh, thank you. Jezebel was created by a weak Ahab. That's why I'm not afraid of strong women. Why? Because I'm a strong man. I can handle strong women. I like my daughters to be strong. I like those of them to be able to carry the, the grace of God upon their lives. I'm not afraid. <coughs> Jesus was not afraid. That's why, that's why he had women around about him and he blessed them. And, and many of them supported him with all their goods, all their resources in order to help. Amen. You look at all those people who stood with him financially were women. All right. They stood with him. They helped. That's why it's important. All right. The second thing we talked about is Jesus is raised from the dead. Amen. You and I must know the resurrection life. We are witnesses of his resurrection. Can you say amen to that? And we also talked about how God exalted him to at his right hand. Is that right? That God exalted him at his right hand. And we also talked in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. How God gave him a name higher than any other name. And I told you in the last session. How you and I will need to stand in his name. Amen. How, to need, how we need to stand in his name. And how we need to operate in his name. And I took the model of the, the prayer of the Lord Jesus. And began to explain to you. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread all right forgive us our sins because we have forgiven the sins of those who who have wronged us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the glory thine is the power forever and ever amen can you say amen to that yes. and we, we learn how to operate in that that's what it means to stand in jesus name 
stand on his behalf and now let me give you the three most more potent dimensions of truth that was explained here in this place are you ready yes. talk to me are you ready yes. this is what he says he says and uh, verse 33 therefore having been exalted to the right hand of god and having received from the father the promise of the holy spirit he has poured forth this which you both see and hear write this down jesus received the promise of the father jesus received the promise of the father Jesus received the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father is the mother of all promises. It will unlock all the promises in the Bible. I'll say this again. The Holy Spirit is the mother of all promises. All right. The promise of the Father is the mother of all promises, and it will unlock all the promises in the Bible. Every promise in the Bible will be unlocked by the promise of the Father. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He will unlock every promise and show you how to enter into every promise because He is the one who moved on man and caused man to prophesy and caused man to declare those promises. Are you with me? He is the one who is the one who recorded those pro prophecies and recorded those promises as he moved through man, he allowed man to pen down the Bible and pen down the promises and pen down the prophecies. It was the Holy Spirit moving upon man. So it's the same Holy Spirit that will allow you to, to move into you and move you to appropriate the promise. Are we hearing? So it's the Holy Spirit that came upon man, right? That man heard what God was saying and they penned it down. So it's the same Holy Spirit that is now coming to you so that you can now appropriate what was written. Can you say amen to that? So when you receive the promise of the Father, which is, which is the Holy Spirit, you receive another comforter. Amen. You not only receive another comforter, you receive another teacher. You also re receive someone who is going to be your strength. You receive someone who is going to be your leader. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they become sons of God. You also receive one who is going to bear witness with your heart that you are children of God. So he is also a witness. Are you with me? He is also witnessing to you, proclaiming to you, teaching you, educating you, testifying to you. So the Holy Spirit will begin to do a powerful work. And this is what Jesus secured from the Father. <clears throat> at the day of Pentecost he secured this promise for everything that he did here on this earth for 33 and a half years it is to, is to get another comforter to come and live inside us that's why for 30, 30 years he lived as a perfect man for the next three and a half years he lived as, as, the, as, as, the, as, as the Christos of God as, the Jesus, as Jesus the Christ are we hearing? He showed how we can live in the life of the Spirit and fulfill the will, the plan, and the purposes of God. He showed us how that God can dwell on the inside of us because of the Holy Spirit paving the way that the Father can come and live inside. Are we hearing? He showed how the Holy Spirit can begin to empower you. The power of God can be present for you to receive, to, to perform healing. He showed how the Holy Spirit can empower you to, to be a witness of God the Father. Can you say amen to that? So that's why the, this is one of the greatest revelation that you really need to build into your own life. That the moment you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the master key to unlock everything that is written in the word of God. That means you can now start to understand the scriptures. You can now start to appropriate the scriptures. Are you listening? You can now enter into what the scriptures are saying. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit is the master key to unlock all the promises. All right? Because He is the promise of the Father. Not just the promise of the Word, but He is the promise of the Father. He's not just promises in the Bible. He is the promise of God the Father. The, the Father promised that as, if Jesus' work is complete, the Holy Spirit will be given. All right? He is also a promise that Jesus said that when I ascend and I, when I go to the Father, he will send the Holy Spirit to you. It's also a revelation that when Jesus ascended and sat at the right hand of God and he arrived, the Holy Spirit was sent. It is a proof that Jesus arrived. He is not just disappeared and lost somewhere. 
you know, in Timbuktu. No, he is not. He has reached heaven and he has seated at the right hand of God and he has received. So when, when he was exalted, when he arrived at the throne room of God and was crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Holy Spirit was given to him and he poured forth this which you both see and hear. So it's a clear proof, friends, that everything is going to come into alignment because the Holy Spirit has come down. All right. Let me show you a few things in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All right. The God over there is God Elohim, the three in one. Are you with me? The Godhead. In the beginning, the Godhead created the heavens and the earth. So the Father, all right, created all things through Jesus. The Bible says that through Him, all things were created. Is that right? You read the book of Hebrews. It says through Jesus, all things were created. That God created the whole world through Jesus, the Word. Amen. And He filled the whole world through the Holy Spirit. All right. It is, it, is, it is essential for us to come to this understanding, all right? God said, all right, God said, the, the, God the Father said, the Father said, the Son formed, the Spirit filled. All right, the Father said, the Son formed, and the Spirit filled. That's how the order always operates. Are we hearing? So when God created the heavens and the earth, it was clean. It was beautiful. Are you listening? So in Ch Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, all right, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created three heavens and one earth. All right? He created three heavens and one earth. Heavenly heavens, that is, that, that has to do with the firmament, that all the stars, moon, sky, and everything else, that's called the heavens. Then you have the heavenlies, and then you have the third heaven. All right, so you have the heavens, then you have the heavenlies, and you have the third heaven. The third heaven was the paradise of God. Are we hearing? So God created the heavens and the earth. Now, at some point, after God created the angels and so on, Lucifer sinned against God. We don't know how, at what time in eternity, because eternity has no time. Are you with me? When God created the heavens and the earth, He created the angels, He created everything else at that time. All right? And so if this was before man was formed. Are you listening? Before man was formed. So when God created that, he created everything perfect. He created all things well. Do we understand that? All right, he created all things well. But Lucifer at some point began to turn in his heart. He began to say, I want to rise above God. I want to rise above the stars of heaven. I want to set my throne above the stars of God. And so in his heart, he began to churn. He began to keep saying in his heart and sin nature developed. So if you keep saying and saying and saying and saying and saying, if you keep speaking words, you are born again by those words. We are born again by the word of God. Is that right? I said we are born again by the incorruptible seed of God's word. Is that right? So the word came in, we are born again. So if you keep speaking lies and lies and lies and lies, you start to develop lying nature. Are you hearing me? If you keep speaking lies, if you just think about lustful things, you know, you think about lustful thoughts, you speak lustful thoughts, and, and, and you communicate lustful thoughts, you talk dirty jokes, before long you have a lustful nature because what you are continually working with, with your mouth, with your mind, and with your heart will become a nature inside you. So if you're thinking negative things, it will become negative inside. All right? And so what happened was Lucifer, when he did that, he became, he became Satan. God never created Satan. He created Lucifer. All right? And Lucifer was an object of his own. He, he made himself. He created himself. He was born again by his own words. What he said in his heart, in his mind, what he declared. Keep on declaring inside his own heart. I will. I, I, I will. I will. And because of that I, the sin nature begins to develop on the inside. Do you understand that? So at some point, he was cast out on the earth. Are you with me? And God threw him out from heaven into the earth. And that's why you read, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. Are you listening? All right. So when God created the earth and the heavens, everything was clean. Everything was beautiful. Do you understand that? 
everything was beautiful. So when God created everything, it was beautiful. But Lucifer sinned and God cast him down to the earth. And when he cast him down to the earth, what happened? He, the earth, took his nature. He was covered with darkness. God never created darkness. Are you with me? He never created that darkness on the earth. He created everything beautiful, but the earth became formless. There was no more form. There was no more structure. There was no more authority. Nothing was there. And darkness was over the surface of the waters. Are we hearing? And then, and then the, father said, it's, the father said to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, go down and arrest this because I'm going to recreate the earth. So the Bible said the Spirit of God came down and was moving over the surface of the water. So God sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was to arrest the work of the enemy. Are you with me? To contain the work of the enemy. So that the, 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 the darkness would not just continue to spread, but God will begin to hold it back and hold it in place. Why? Why did he send the Holy Spirit down? Not only to arrest and restrain the work of the enemy, but because God was going to recreate the earth. Are you with me? So the Holy Spirit was already dwelling upon the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. So when God spoke, the Holy Spirit took the word. Are you listening? When God spoke, the Holy Spirit took the word. And that word became the material by which he recreated the heavens and the earth for six days. Are you listening? And that's what happened. That's what the whole book of Genesis chapter 6. All right, sorry, Genesis chapter 1. That's what it is. All right, you can see how God is recreating the earth. First there was light and then before long, one after the other, God began to establish. Finally, on the sixth day, he made man. Are you listening? So that's why it is very important for us to understand that God, you know, sent the Holy Spirit to arrest the works of the enemy. Amen. And, he, and the Holy Spirit positioned himself so that he can confirm every word that God is going to speak from then on. So the Holy Spirit was down on the earth and now God is speaking into the earth. And what is the Holy Spirit going to do? He's going to confirm every word of God with signs and wonders following. Amen. So God the, Holy, God the Father spoke. What did the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit began to establish that word. Amen. That, the Holy Spirit began to establish that word, confirm that word with signs, wonders and miracles. So when, when the word of God is spoken, the Holy Spirit will confirm it. Amen. When the, whole, when the word of God is spoken, the Holy Spirit will begin to take it as a material and will begin to cause things to happen just like he said. Can you say amen to that? That's why the work of the Holy Ghost is very, very important. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit is very, very, very important. And that's why I want to show you something that you, when you learn to work with the Holy Spirit, all promises will become a reality. Everything that God has promised you will come to you. Are you listening? Everything that God has promised you will come to you. So we're going to do a, a, a short study along this line because this will really, really help us. Are you with me? I said it's going to help us. That's why you've got to know the Holy Spirit in such clarity that in your own life that you can see the dimensions of the Holy Spirit is to really, really help you get everything that God has spoken, everything that God has revealed, everything that God has prepared, everything that God is sending to you, you can receive it by the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen to that? All right, come with me if you have your Bibles to the book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16. In verse 5, John 16, verse 5. Now I'm going to him who sent me. I'm going back to the Father. And none of you ask me where you're going. But because I've said this thing, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the hel helper will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin. In verse 8, of righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because you, they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he, he will not speak of his own initiative. And whatever he hears, he will speak. And, and he will disclose to you what is to come. And he will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. And all the things that the Father has are mine. 
Therefore I said, he will take off mine and will disclose it to you. Are you listening? I want you to write down number one. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Is sent to reveal Jesus as the truth. The spirit of truth is sent to reveal Jesus as the truth. Are you listening? Yeah. There's only one thing that he was going to come convict the world. What is he going to come to convict the world? Of sin. Sin because we do not believe in him. There's only one sin that he is going to come to convict the world of. That we do not believe in him. So the first aspect of the spirit of truth is to reveal Jesus as the truth. Apart from him, everything is a lie. Apart from him, there is no light. In him is life. Light. In him is light. To reveal to us anything outside of Jesus is not what God requires. Are you listening? Your opinion is not important. Your culture is not important. All right? Your, des your desires are not important. Your wishes are not important. Because anything outside of him is sin. Are you with me? Anything outside of what God ordained through Jesus is sin. Nobody is going to get saved outside of him. Are you listening? Nobody is going to get saved because of good behavior. All are going to be saved in Christ Jesus. All right? In him is life. In him is everything. So the, whole, the spirit of truth, all right, is to reveal Jesus as the truth. The spirit of truth will reveal Jesus to us so that we can understand him. Everything about Jesus is made known to us by the spirit of truth. His power, his dimension, his life, his healing, his miracles, how he functions. All right, it will reveal Jesus is the way. It will reveal Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. If there is no truth, there is no way. All right, if there is no truth, there is no way. Where there is no way, there is no life. So it, it comes to reveal Jesus. Are we hearing? The spirit of truth is come to reveal Jesus that he is the only way, the only truth, the only life. Are we hearing that? I want, you to, I want you to understand this because I'm going to open up this entire thing for you so that you understand the work of the Holy Ghost. The work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. All right, to help you understand how he lived. To help you understand what, what he thinks, what he thought, how he operated, how he labored, how he worked with God, how he was a true son. It is to reveal Christ more and more. That's why the last book, the book of Revelation, is a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the revealing of the Antichrist. It's not the revealing of the beast. It's not revealing of the harlot church. It is a revealing of Jesus. If you read the title, you will know. But yet people major in the minor. They talk about the 666, they talk about the beast, they talk about the Antichrist. That's about all their mind can think because that's where they are beginning to open their eyes to. So they, all they see is the dragon and the serpent. But it's a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ given to his servant John. God was trying to reveal Jesus. Amen. At the end of the day, that's all that will matter. He will reveal his son. All right, he will reveal his son. If you look, if you, if you put your hands here and come to Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Galatians 1. All right, 15 and 16. He will help you understand this. 15, but when God who has set me up, set me apart even from my mother's womb, called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me. So that I might preach him among the Gentiles. What was God's desire? To set me apart from my mother's womb. So whatever happens in my mother's womb does not matter. God set me apart from my mother's womb. Are you listening? And he has started to become my umbilical cord. I'm drawing life not from my mother anymore. I'm drawing life from God who set me apart. I hear me. So stop telling me about your history. Tell me what you're connected to now. All right. What are you connected to now? If people are only talking about, 
you know, all the, you know, my grandmother, my mother and my brother and, and the problems I went through. And you, you got to remember what are you connected to now? When, but when God had, who set me apart, even from my mother's womb, called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me. So what is God desired to do is wants to reveal his son that is in you so that you might preach him to the Gentile. Who? Who is the him? Him who is revealed. God's desire was to reveal Jesus in Paul so that Paul can preach the Christ who is revealed in him to the Gentiles. That simply means you have no message, my friends, to preach if Jesus is not revealing you. If all you can do is just speak some, some things on your culture and some revelation from the book and some understanding from the book, it's not enough to, for you to preach. Christ must be revealed in you. That God will reveal his son in me so that I can preach him who is revealed to the Gentiles. Amen. Most people are preaching sermons. But you look at the book of Acts in chapter 8. Philip went to preach Christ. Are you with me? Philip went to preach Christ. It's not a sermon. It's not a topic. It's a life. All right. You speak out life. You declare life. You, you release life. You... You, you, you impart life. God was pleased to reveal his son in me that I might preach him who is revealed to the Gentiles. Because if people don't see Jesus inside you, they will not believe the Jesus you're talking about. Are you hearing me? So what is the first task of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. Is that true? Is to reveal Jesus. Number two. The second Work of the Holy Spirit. All right, is to convict the world of sin. The second work of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin. The Holy Spirit, all right, the Spirit of Truth is given the task that is a continual work of conviction of this particular sin that men do not believe in him. All right, there's only one sin that is God's going to convict us of that we do not believe in him. Because God put all things in the Son, in him is life. Is that true? So the conviction of the sin that God, God is going to deal with, the world is one. That we do not believe in him who has become the answer for all mankind. He is the answer. In him there is life. In him there is hope. In him there is wisdom. In him there is sanctification. But this is what, because people are now trying to put their hope in every other thing except in him. So the Holy Spirit is going to allow them to fail, to come to a conviction in their own life that without Jesus there is no life. If we're going to convince, if we're going to bring conviction into the hearts of men, we've got to begin to reveal He is the only truth, only way, only life. Is, there is no alternative about it. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He's not just one of the truths. He's not one of the ways. He is the only. When you say things like this, it's an offense unto the people. But there's, it is a fact. Without Jesus... All right, without Jesus, there is no life. So this is a conviction that is going to happen. All right, this is a conviction. You must prove to this world that apart from him, there is no life. Amen. If you work with the Holy Spirit, this is what you reveal to them. Apart from him, there is no life. Apart from his word, there is no life. Apart from his him, there is no righteousness. Are we listening? And that's why it's important that the conviction of the Holy Spirit is to bring this one conviction that if you walk out of him, you walk straight into sin. Are you with me? That's why I can do nothing. All right? I can do nothing. Out, apart from him, I can do nothing. You must live this life. That's why the Holy Spirit's job is to continually stay upon you so that you never walk into a place where you're walking out of Christ. You're always in Christ. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Because if you stay in Christ, you'll quit sin. Are you listening? If you stay in Christ, you will quit sin. If you stay in Christ, you will live, you, you, you live a different life. 
sin will have no power over you. Because apart from him, you can do nothing. If you stop doing things apart from Jesus, then the Holy Spirit has finished his job in your life. Because his job is to convince you of that, convict you of sin that you do not believe in him. All right, you must believe in him to such an extent that you put all your life in him, all your hope in him, all your trust in him, that you trust him fully and not partially. Are you listening? You don't put a, few, a little trust here, a little trust there, and trust the world, trust the chariots, trust the horses, you know, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Completely, wholly, fully. Amen? That, that's what the Holy Spirit comes to do, to convict man of sin. Number three, the spirit of truth will establish righteousness. The spirit of truth will establish righteousness. And we know what righteousness is all about. is right living before God, right living before man, right li living before the devil, right standing within yourself, and right standing within the circumstances. You know what righteousness is all about. So the Spirit will not allow you to walk in crooked and twisted thinking patterns and attitudes and motives and, and living patterns. Why? Because he, he is there to establish righteousness. So you convict us of sin so that we will not live outside of Jesus and his job is to establish righteousness so that they always you are doing what is right. Amen? You're doing what is right. Not just right things. You're doing what is right. Not just right things. So many people are doing right things. You know? Yeah, you know, what is the right thing? The, what is the right thing? You know, it's just like, well, you know, the person is, uh, the person is sin. And I think we should, you know, we should sh show love and compassion. And uh, it's true. These are all the right things. All right, these are all the things that are right. But the right thing is to confront him that why he has come into this place. That's what they don't do. You tell, you, you tell them all the things that are right. You try to do all the things that are right. Take him to your house, give him a cup of coffee. These are all the things that are right. You know, talk to him, put some soft music there before you counsel him. And so all these are all the things that are right. But you're not doing the right thing. You're not doing the one thing that is needed. That's so why we beat around the bush. See, life is so short. We don't have time to do all the things that are right. We've got only time to do the right thing. And this is what righteousness is all about. All right? Seek ye first, not last. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Are we hearing? <coughs> That's why the Spirit of Truth is here to establish righteousness. Right at number four. The spirit of truth will bring judgment on the prince of this world. The spirit of truth will bring judgment on the prince of this world. He wants us to rule over the powers of darkness. The Bible tells us what he will concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. He uses us to continually deal with the enemy. Are you hearing me? Is God going to deal with Satan? No, he has led, led it to you. He gave you all authority and power to cast out devils and straight on scorpions. He has given you power to deal with the enemy, to put the enemy out of business. Are you with me? Is Satan still continuing on the earth? It's not God's problem, it's your problem. So the sooner you get him out of your territory, the better it is. So stop complaining to God. The devil is here, devil's there, devil's here. What are you doing with what you have? I remember the late uh, Brother Hagen had, had this vision many, many years ago in, this, you know, in his life. He saw he, Jesus was standing before him and Jesus was talking to him in a vision, in an open vision. And a monkey came in between and this demon power was just making all kinds of noise and he could not hear what Jesus was saying. So, so he said to Jesus, Jesus, the monkey, I cannot hear what you're saying. Jesus continued to talk. And finally, Brother Hagen, the late Brother Hagen was so angry that he commanded that demon to leave. And the demon just laughed. And then he said to Jesus, why didn't you stop the devil? Because I cannot hear a lot of things that you're saying. 
He said, I gave you the authority. It's your job, not mine. Sometimes we, we think God's the one going to deal with the devil. No, he sent the devil to this world. All right, he cast out the devil into this earth so that the devil can be punished. Are you listening? He sent the devil down to this earth so that he can, the devil can be punished. That man will punish the devil. Not give him a vacation here on this earth. All right, some of us are paying for the devil's vacation. All right, you and I got to shut the devils down. We got to shut the business of the enemy down. We got to shut the, the work of the enemy down. We are, we are to torment the devil, not become tormentor. We are to oppress the devil, not to be oppressed. We are to terrorize the devil, not to become terrorized ourselves. We are to defeat the devil, not to become defeated ourselves. Amen. We must frighten fear. Are you listening? We got to frighten fear. Amen. We got to intimidate, you know, intimidation. We got to intimidate it. We got to swallow up death. We got to destroy the powers so the of the say, Holy Spirit, you know, is going to use you and I to continue to bring judgment on the works of the enemy. He wants us to rule over the powers of darkness, to shut out the work of the enemy so that sin and everything else and satanic influence will no longer be functioning here on this earth. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Do you believe this? Yes. Write down number five. The spirit of truth will reveal to us truth, not facts. All right. The spirit of truth will reveal to us truth, not just facts. Facts are what we know in our mind. Truth is what we know with our spirit. Facts are what we know with our natural senses. Truth is what we know with our spirit. Oh, the Bible tells us about, you know, sorry, the, the facts tell us, signs tell us about the law of gravity. But the Bible tells us also that Jesus walked on water. Are you with me? Jesus walked on water. He defied gravity because he stood on the word and he was walking on as on the word. He was spoken word. He was the declared word. He was the written word. He was the logos. He was God of creation. Are you hearing me? And so we can see that the truth, all right, the, the spirit of truth will reveal to us in the area of truth, not just facts. Let's say, for example, you know, the doctor says to you that you have such and such and such a physical problem. And that is a fact. X-ray proves it. It is a fact. But the truth is by his stripes, you were healed. So the truth outweighs the facts. And truth sets us free from the limitation of facts. Truth outweighs facts. Are you listening? And truth will set us free from the limitation of facts. So we got to tap into truth so that we can prevail. Are you listening? So that we can tap into truth so that we can prevail. So the, the Spirit of God will begin to reveal to us truth. Are we hearing? The Spirit of God will begin to reveal to us truth so that we can begin to understand different dimensions of truth so that we can live in the power of that dimension can you say amen to that yes. do you believe this yes. all right that's why the, when the holy spirit begins to come he will begin to reveal to us truth not just facts because we are so bound by what we see what we hear what we know what, you know by what we smell and what we touch we are bound by the five senses but the holy spirit wants us to live above that that's why he gives us truth Truth will set us free from facts so that we can live in a new dimension of life. It is true. The fact is that you are a girl. But the truth is the Son of God lives inside you. And that truth should set us free. The truth is that we are born in a poor family. The fact is that we are born in a poor family. We are born in Africa. We are born in Asia. That is a fact. You cannot change facts. But if you live by the truth, you can live beyond the limitation of facts in your life. So whatever facts are limiting you, yes, I was born in a poor family, then you can't change facts. It's history. You cannot go on denying yourself. You can't live in self-denial. Yes, you were born in a poor family. Yes, you were not well educated. Yes, you didn't pass all your exams. Yes, you know, you had a bad, bad, you know, record health-wise and you had bad record character-wise. But if, the, if God comes into your heart and you know Jesus is living inside you and truth is setting you free, it is setting you free from all the facts of life. Set you free from all the facts of life. 
all the facts is true it's stacked up against you but now the facts cannot hold you anymore yes you were you were you know you were poor before but not anymore God has set you free from the curse of poverty. Now you are different. Yes, you had a bad record before, but now you're no longer because the truth is coming to your heart and setting you free. Yes, you are a woman. Yes, you are bound before, but now the truth has come, set you free. And truth is setting you free. So if you live by the truth, you break the power of facts. So you don't have to agree with the facts, friends. You don't have to agree with the facts and live under the limitation of the facts because the Holy Spirit came to take you higher than the facts and help you live in the dimensions of truth and the truth will set you free and he who the son set free is free indeed in all your deeds you become free that's why you can't just say the fact is that i only have 20 people what can i do no that's wrong the truth is the truth is outweighs the fact it's not the 20 you are, you have more than 20 with you they're angelic hosts there is god there is the holy spirit they are the promises of god you know, on, on your side, there are more for you than against you. Yeah. That's the truth. And that truth should set you free. Yeah. Rather than look at the 20 and become depressed. You've got to think of the things that you cannot see with your natural eyes. And, that, and you've got to start counting on the other aspect. Because there are more for us than against us. But if you look at the facts, you become depressed. But if you look at the truth, it sets you free from all the oppression of the enemy. Because you begin to realize, hey, God is on your side. Yeah. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. Are we listening? That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Either the fact is that you come from a traditional background. The fact is that you come from a religious environment. The fact is that you, you know, you've gone through the Methodist cycles. You've gone through the Presbyterian cycles. You've gone through all the denominational cycles. These are all the facts that are accumulated in, my, in your mind. But don't, lo don't let those facts hold you down. Don't let those facts hold you down. Let truth set you free. Let truth set you free. See, there may be, you know, if, if you and I can continually love truth and, and love what God, the Holy Spirit is saying to us, you know what's going to happen? Before long, you start to begin to break free. You start to break free from everything that has limited you. All the facts that are stand up against you cannot hold you anymore. It is true, but it's not true. It, 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 it was a fact, but it's not true. It's a fact. It's not true. It's a fact. It's not true. Everything that was a fact no longer can hold you. Amen no longer can hold you you know you, you've never been able to pass all the exam that's a fact all right the papers prove it but now the truth is god is renewing your mind you're beginning to understand things you can never understand before you can go for your degree you can begin to study you can begin to uh, tap into so many different dimensions it's a fact that i do not have any certificate for the business in business administration or, or business studies i don't have any kind of qualification yet i have done business successfully i'm teaching businessmen i'm i'm, I'm laboring with businessmen in the in the month of may next month we are going to the city of kuala Lumpur and beginning to do a, a a training conference how to build a a formidable workforce and we're bringing in the non-christian ceos we are bringing in the the, the human research uh, human department uh, research department people directors together and we're training all the non-christian people out there and mentoring them in their businesses i don't have the qualification yes that's a fact but the truth is god can set you free from the fact if he wants you to change the world he will give you the education he will re-educate you he will qualify you empower you to get the job done in the future we just begin to develop a school for politicians to train people how to get into politics how to think how to set policies how to begin to turn societies around how to turn societies that are going down how to turn we got to school them we got to put them through a school put to train them in a school not just train them for the spiritual work of the ministry but we got to train them to take over the earth we got to train men and women so the truth must set us free yes we are not born politicians but we can be trained are you hearing me? We can be trained. We can train pastors, leaders. We can train a man and woman who can go in and change the city and change the environment. We can do that. Why? Because truth is what sets us free. Amen. Facts are, can be stacked against us. It does not matter. Just because you didn't study in the business school doesn't mean that you should stay out of business. If God wants you, he will give you truth. He will explain to you truth. And that truth will set you free. And once you are free in that area, that area is open for you. You are free to enter. Amen. You're no longer bound. You're no longer crippled. You're no longer held back because the truth has set you free. Now you can enter in. God give you access code because he gives you truth. Can you say amen to that? Everything that God wants you to do, you can enter. Amen. There's no holds barred.
In the days ahead, everything we can need to do, we can do. Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Can you say amen? amen. Just to sit down there and say, well, I'm not qualified. I'm not this. It's, it's a fact. It's a fact. But if God wants you, he will give you truth first. If you really want to know God is opening up that way, he keeps speaking to you. About that area again and again and again and again. It's not your desire. Oh, everybody is going to business. Let me also get into business so that I can get some extra money for the extension of God's kingdom. You will not work. Desire is not enough. You need truth. All right. I think, I, I think if, I, if I have a little bit more money, you know, uh, I, then I can run my ministry better. Then I can provide. Then I don't have to depend on people. Now that's a desire. That's a just normal general conclusion. That's not God. So if you jump into that, you collapse. Because everybody desires that too. There's nobody in this building who don't want to have some extra money so that they don't have to become dependent on a, on a system. They would like to have extra resources so they can give to God more, so that they can bless, bless the people of God more, so that they can release more resources into the kingdom. Everybody has that desire. But that's not what I'm talking about. We need to have truth come to us. God has to open up the scriptures. He has to open up revelation. That truth will set us free in that area. And then all of a sudden, because we are free in that area, we enter in, explodes. That's how I enter into every area that God wants me to enter. Are you with me? And God just begins to open an opportunity. God begins to talk to me because I'm traveling around the nations of the world. There are people with this kind of expertise. The people with that kind of expertise try to pull the two expertise together. So now I'm becoming the man who is bringing, I'm like a broker beginning to bring in. Okay, you got coal, you got, you got timber, you got coal, you got, you, you know, you, you got nickel, you, you know, you got all kinds of stuff there. You got gold over there. All right, you, you need gold. All right, let's, let me just put the two together. And so God's just opening up international business. So I'm, I'm here and this thing is just continuing. And that's how, that's how our finance and ministry. So I'm just doing more than holding a mic. I was just talking to a businessman, you know, who's wanting to, wanting to buy, buy coal. You know, buy coal from Indonesia. And they are already ready buyers for a certain type of coal, certain type of grading, a certain kind of coal that they would like to buy because they are already buyers stacking up. And all my job is to find the coal. I got contacts in Indonesia who got coal. And I got contacts here who wants to buy coal. Put the two together and they make the deal. So I just get blessed and con they continue with their coal. I continue with my goal. But you said, where do you have fine time to do? When God set you free, you're free. Yes. If you're in, you're in. Are you with me? You don't, you don't have to struggle. Why? It's not facts. We're not operating by sense world. We're operating by, by super, supernatural dimension. So God began to speak to me about certain aspects. I got, I got myself into it. Got myself into it. Got myself into it. And whatever the Holy Spirit gives me truth, speaks to me. He sets that area free. You enter. Are you listening? Yes. And that's why it's very important for you and I to understand. All right. Sometimes we have such, such difficulty. <coughs> such difficulty because inside our minds, we, you know, we, we are so limited by sense knowledge. I'm not limited by sense knowledge. I'm, I'm very, very daring to trust truth. I'm very, very courageous to trust, trust truth. If God speaks this to me, then I believe he is right and everything else is wrong. I have tremendous courage. To believe God's word. Because you know the testimony I mentioned to you last night. How God revealed to me that man cannot live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I trust God's word solely. I trust his word. I really, really do trust his word. If he speaks to me, that's it. I'm, I'm in. I will just jump in. Whatever he said to me, God spoke to me and said, I want you to buy this piece of property next door because the land is, you know, because actually this, all the houses that you see on the other piece of land, they, they have already started to develop all those land and they've already subdivided this particular land. God said to me, I want you to go and get the land. I'm thinking like, wow, that's serious. There's one acre of land and, and it's already subdivided and they, they have already started building houses on the other side. How am I going to get the piece of land? God said, go get the land. So I went there and I told, told the person who is the father-in-law of that owner. And I said to him, give me this land. That's what Abraham said. Give me this land for a price. So I was like Abraham, the patriarch. I went there and said, give me this land. He said, yes. 
He said, yes. I was shocked. I thought it would take longer. You know, I was shocked. I, but I said, you, you know, then, then I began to panic. I said, but I said, it's subdivided. I didn't even believe. You know, I, I had to, I had to get, a, get a lot of rebuking along the way. That I won't tell you. But I, I, I said, give me the land. He said, yes. He said, I'll talk to my son-in-law. And, and within a few weeks, we bought the land. Oh, did we have money? No. I mean, if you have that much of money, you don't have to worry about God. You don't have to worry about God. You'll buy anything. You'll buy, 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 because you have so much money. Because I have no money. I had only God's word. God said, go and tell the man you're going to buy. So we went, God, so all we did was we raised up 10% for it. We paid. Now I'm going to think, how on earth the other things are going to come? But we trusted God because God said it has to happen. We're not going to lose our deposit. <coughs> are we hearing? By a, a, you know, our, our, the place, the mom and I were walking, yeah, driving around in a cruise. We were just cruising along one, one evening. And uh, I said to mom, I said, I would really like to get a house, build a house of our own. I said, where would you like the land to be? She said, about this area. I said, this area. All right, let's go to that area. And so we found there was there were land available everywhere. We wanted a piece of land right near the road. There is a trunk road so that everybody can, you know, as pass by, we can just keep watch. <laughs> All right? We just needed a hobby. We just needed to know who is passing. We want to be in the in the highway. We want to be in the highway, not the byway, but the highway. So it's a piece of land. I said, that looks like a good land. Let's find out whose land it is. It was a land of a former health minister of Malaysia. So I'm thinking like, wow, this is serious. So within two days, I got the contact and I began to speak to the person and found out that he just got saved. Found out that he and his wife just got saved and they said, oh, you're a pastor? And I said, yes, I am. And, oh, they said, we heard about you. I'm thinking like, oh, okay, that's good. And, and, and so before long, in a short period of time, and I said to them, look, I'm just going to buy this land and just going to be my house. I'm just going to be a place where we can have house people in and, and you know, entertain international guests that are coming in. I just really need a good place that I can. So I said, can you just give me a payment so that I don't have to take loan? Give me staggered payment. I'll pay in three different times. And this is the amount of money. So I negotiated. I said everything. They didn't say anything. I said everything. I said, I want this land for this price. And this, this, this is the negotiation. I said, what do you think? They said, okay. I said the price, I said how I'm going to pay, when I'm going to pay, and I said, how, what do you think? They said, okay. I bought the land cheaper than all, all the lands that was available down there so that I can have my own house so that in the, in the future we can entertain our guests, international guests that are coming in and we can just begin to house them. And, uh, and, and God just began to supernaturally begin to speak to me, you know, and, and things, things like this in my life has always been that way. It's not because I'm bold. I just got God's word. And because of that reason, because he has spoken, you can be courageous. If, if God is not there, you're finished. you get yourself into serious trouble. But God, because of his grace, his goodness that comes upon our life, then all things become possible. Do you understand this? So the Holy Spirit reveals to us truth. Now let me show you there are, uh, there are seven dimensions of truth. All right? Before I go to the next point, that the Holy Spirit will reveal other things. But let me just explain to you about the truth first. And there are seven dimensions. Write down. First dimension is that He will reveal all truth. This is still under number five, okay? This is still under number five. The first truth that He is going to reveal to us is all truth. That means everything pertains to truth. Truth concerning health. Truth concerning wealth. Truth concerning personality development. Truth concerning every aspect of your life. All right. He will reveal to us all truth. He will guide you into all the truth. All the truth. All right. Everything that you need to know. That simply means God will open up things for you. Everything that you need to know. All right, everything that you need to know that will set you free, God will reveal it to you. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. <clears throat> if you're in a financial area, you're bound, you know you have debt, you know you, you don't know how to raise money, 
how to pay up your loan. You don't know how to buy a house. You know, all the truth that is needed for you to set yourself free from that area so that you receive everything that is needed for you to buy a house, buy a land, buy property, or pay up your loan, whatever. Whatever you need to know. That knowledge that will give you freedom in that area. Go give it to you. Are you with me? So if, if you're in debt, don't cry. If you're in debt, don't cry. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you truth that will set you free in that area so that you know how to raise money, so that you know how to begin to save money. You know how to put money together. You know how to get money. And all the things that will set you free, God will give you the knowledge that will set you free in that area so that you become successful in that area. Are you listening? You know, you'd be very surprised, including car including your own car how to look after your own car because not every mechanic will tell you because you have never been trained to as a mechanic so you don't know but the holy spirit can show you speak to you things about your car and tell you things about your car they will set you free so that you can run your car well drive your car well sustain your car longer and begin to even tell the mechanic what is wrong i know i know some of you will have difficulty but i'm telling you it is possible just say yes it's possible all right, don't think it's not possible because God will begin to give you all truth. He'll begin to explain to you all truth, every area, including your own physical body. Sometimes your body, you know, you feel like certain things are happening in your body. You don't know what is happening. If you go to a doctor, then the doctor will have to test you, take all kinds of tests. But sometimes the Holy Spirit can be telling you things. The Holy Spirit can be telling you, you, you lack a certain kind of mineral in your body. And then you begin to check and begin to read and find out, hey, it's true. It's true, but the Holy Spirit can tell you. He's not telling you facts, all right? That may be facts for others, but it's truth for you because it sets you free. It may be facts for others, but it's truth for you, and He will lead you into all truth. Are you with me? He can show you. He can give you a recipe. Amen? He can give you a recipe. He can give you all kinds of amazing discovery so that things will supernaturally happen for us. Amen? Amen. We thank God for his word today. If we look at the contextual point today, you know, Papa began to be started the um, sharing today and he said, men are God's strategic weapon of war. One man, Titus Timothy, can change the situation, can change. It takes one man. But this man, if you put everything together, this man is shaped and formed by the spirit of truth. Every lie, every fact, he does not live by facts. We don't live by lives, but the truth begins to shape our life. And because truth is shaping our lives and our mind, the frequency of heaven, which is truth itself, is always coming to us, thus having open heaven. This is how the double decade of open heaven will come into our lives. And I want us to see that every week, every week, the, um, the power and the purpose of Pentecost He's talking about the frequencies of open heaven. And this is how we connect it all together. And as we begin to, as we begin to take this word, as we begin to believe it, see it, and understand the contextual points, that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. This is what we will be. We will be God's strategic weapon. You will be God's strategic weapon. The spirit of truth is not just for us to live a life out of struggle and just, you know, just make it true. No, 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 no. That's not the purpose. The purpose is not to survive like everybody else. Our purpose is to make a difference. Our purpose is to become God's strategic weapon in his hand, a weapon in his hand. This is what we must become. And this is why we cannot just continue, continue life as normal, but understand that the Holy Spirit, when he comes into our life, he's not just comforting us. He's not just helping us. Although it's called a helper, a comforter, the, 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 the Greek word there means parakletos. That means the one who comes alongside, but they, in their mind, in the mind of the Holy Spirit, he has a finishing point. And the finishing point is that this man, you and I, a corporate man that God is raising, becomes God's strategic weapon, shaped and formed by the truth that God, is, that God has put in our lives and in our hearts. And we thank God. 
It makes it all easier because we, we have um, God's man on the ground, Dr. Jonathan David, or affectionately known to us as Papa, giving us the truth, making it clear to us, making it understandable to us little by little. And this is why I pray that this evening, you and I will begin to understand that the contextual point this evening is so that you and I can become shaped our lives will be live. We live our lives based on truth, the spirit of truth. Every aspect, our lives will be built on truth. No lies can penetrate us. No facts can penetrate us, because what is about to happen in the next two years? I believe, um, as you have heard, that recession and crisis is about to hit the earth like never before, according to the prophecies that Papa has also given to us about the cows. You can see that the, the timetable is also the, is, is very, very on spot, very, very in line. But how is it possible for us? Because it's possible because there's double decade of open heaven. How does the double decade of open heaven become a reality in our lives through this spirit of truth that we have received today? God bless each and every one of you. And I pray, yes, there is an announcement, sorry. The announcement is next um, Tuesday. We will not have, there will be no upper room. You can see that it's on the screen now, next Tuesday. Uh, but please join us. Please join us on Friday, on Friday night. Uh, I believe we are starting at 7 Malaysian time. And then on Saturday is at uh, 2 o'clock. And then on Sunday at 9 o'clock. And then we have a question and answer session at 2 p.m. All right, these are all Malaysian times, um, and uh, it will be live stream. It will be um, on Zoom. It will be it will be uh, broadcasted. I think you'll receive the emails. You receive the information, and I pray that you will join us. And uh, we will all be leaving God for the next level. I asked Papa. I said, "What is your desire? What is what would you like to see?" He said, I like to see everyone go to the next level as Pastor Tony comes, as Pastor B comes for these meetings. So let's keep on praying. Let's keep on believing God that, you know, um, that each and every one of us will be equalized. Whether you're here or not here, let's trust God. God is bigger. God is greater. Just because you're not here does not mean it will not happen to you. But let's trust God together. That equalization will happen. Good evening and thank you for being with us. God bless you and your family. Have an amazing week. Do continue to pray with us and pray for these meetings and pray for an open heaven as we begin to receive all that God has for us. Here from the headquarters, we tell you and we say, say to you, see you at the top and God bless you. Good night.
Sunday night.